Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime Answers. This is a Q&A video where I answer your questions about video games and I guess whatever's on your mind. I kind of limit my questions to one per person. If you would like to get questions in for next week, just head down to the comment section down below. But without further ado, let's get into your questions. And our first one comes from our Discord server from Terrence D. Clark who asks, Will Sonic Frontiers be the best Sonic game since Sonic Adventure 2? That is a very, very subjective thing to say. I don't even think Sonic Adventure 2 is the best Sonic game. For me, my favorite Sonic game of all time is Sonic Lost Worlds. For some people, it's Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Maybe it's Knuckles. Maybe it's Sonic Colors or Generations. Everyone's going to have their own favorite Sonic game. So saying, will this be the best since X game is very, very subjective since that particular favorite Sonic game is is going to be, well, up to the eye of the beholder or the eye of the player. Now, for Sonic Frontiers, I think it has a chance to become the best Sonic game of all time. It could also end up being a steaming pile of doo-doo. There's nothing to really say about this until I actually play it. I think at times it looks really good. At times it looks a little bit questionable. It's not here yet, so I'm not sure what you want me to say, and all of us are gonna have different opinions. Next up, speaking of Sonic, Sonic Man the best from our Discord server asks, in the far future from now, do you see a day where you only focus on live streams, not talking about now or next year, I mean way out in the future. Now, I find this question to be fascinating because I've actually talked in the past about two thirds of my revenue at the channel comes from live streams. Now, what do we get during live streams? We get super chats. We also happen to get memberships. People aren't hitting the join member button unless it's during a live stream. I have yet to get a member to actually join based off a video. They only become members on the channel, which is a paid subscription through the live streams. So do I see a future where I'm only doing live streams? No. Despite the fact that clearly it makes more revenue than my standard videos, I don't necessarily want to be a full-time live streamer. There is too much pressure put on full-time live streamers to stream from eight to 12 hours per day. This takes me away from my children. This takes me away from my fiance. This takes me away from my life. One thing I like about being a YouTuber is a little bit of the flexibility I gain from not only the fact that I have an in-home studio here, but also because I can, if I'm going to be a little bit late with an episode of say Prime 5, I don't have to panic that, oh, because I had a doctor's appointment this morning, or I had to go meet with the teacher of our parent-teacher conferences, or I had to go do this thing, or I have to mow the lawn. I don't have to panic that suddenly I'm going to be missing out on money because no matter when I release that video, as long as it's before you know, I don't say 8 p.m. at night. As long as I get something out before then, it's probably going to perform okay and still make the usual 10 to 20 bucks per video my videos typically make. We're actually moving our live streams off the channel anyways. We're going to be live streaming all of our live streams over on the podcast channel, hopefully temporarily while we build up a brand new live stream only channel. That's right. We're about to have a four-way network going here at Nintendo Prime from having our standard channel, our podcast channel, a live stream channel, and <clears throat> a website. In case you guys didn't know, NintendoPrime.net, go check it out. So no, I don't foresee a future where I'm ever a full-time live streamer. I'm just not interested enough in sucking my life away for 8 to 12 hours a day staring in, at a screen. It's just not going to happen. Next up, we have a question from RetroGeek. Uh, he says, Prime question, what, if any, of the older Sega franchises should be brought back and modernized, and which one should be turned into a movie next? I actually make some notes on this. I don't play a lot of Sega games. I just never have. I didn't really play Sega growing up. I eventually did play on a Genesis, but I wasn't playing Sega's games. I played Crazy Taxi. I'm not even sure if they own the IP rights to that. To be honest, the only game I can really think of from their back catalog that I might want to see back is the Knights series that was made by the Sonic team. Uh, I think the last one came out on Wii. I think there's only two games in the franchise, but I'm not like an expert, so don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure the final one came out on Wii. I would like to see maybe that IP come back if it's a remaster, a remake, a reboot, or even just a third game in the series. That's maybe it. I can't imagine anything else. As for movies... The only thing I could think of is technically Sega owns Bayonetta, so they would have to approve of a movie for Bayonetta, and I wouldn't mind seeing a Bayonetta movie rated R, uh, and then maybe have it 
have a similar style and feel to say Constantine. You guys remember that Keanu Reeves movie called Constantine where he was like fighting demons and repelling, you know, Satan's son. And like, they, I'm not going to go spoil all the plot for it. But the point is, I thought that that was a really nice, nice movie. And I would like to see since Bayonetta deals with demons and all this stuff. It might be kind of neat to have a movie in that ilk. Although obviously with Bayonetta as the titular character and doing Bayonetta things. I don't know. That's just me. Uh, next up, we have a question from Umbra, who says, Prime question, will Switch Pro be launching within the next year and a half? And if so, what changes will be made to the console? I think if Nintendo wants us to be a 10-year platform, then yes, Switch Pro is out in the next uh, year and a half. If they don't care for it to be a 10-year platform, then we're talking Switch 2 in 2024. Uh, in terms of what changes, you know, at this point, I like Switch OLED the way it is. I like the OLED panel. I think it looks really good. They can keep the 720p screen. I am totally fine with that. I don't, you know, like my phone here, I think this has like a 4K screen. Honestly, it could be a 1080p screen. When the pixels are that small, it doesn't really matter to me that much. So I'm cool with it staying at 720p and just giving you more performance and handheld for frame rates and just graphic fidelity and doing a bunch of crazy stuff with that, which by the way, graphic fidelity is not resolution. Resolution is clarity, just to clear that up. So yeah, just more power. We need more power. I would like to see a new, new, new chip, a new chipset. Uh, I would like to see them go with a 4K DLSS setup for home consoles, so things stop so, looking so muddy and blurry on big TVs, uh, and obviously getting better performance and frame rates. I just want games to be at 60 FPS, or if you're going to have something that pushes the visual fidelity to the extreme, a locked 30 FPS. That's about it. Corey Bohm has a three pack of questions, and the only reason I'm allowing him to have the three pack is because. I'm on his family membership for Nintendo Switch Online, so that's the least I can give him. Uh, Corey Bob says, prime question, Squid or Octo? So this is for first two and three. Also, what weapons are you thinking of me? He's like, this is a four pack, so Squid, squid or Octo? Probably going with Squid, uh, and I've always been the en an NZAP player, so probably gonna end up with that unless I end up liking one of the newer weapons better. He also says, what day of the week will the community splat up be? I have no idea. I do wanna do a weekly Splatoon 3 sort of gaming event, whether I'm playing or not. I would like our community to get together and play together. Uh, so I haven't figured that one out yet. I probably should since it's coming out next week, but I think I need to, it needs to come out. I need to play it and then talk to the community and figure out what day works best for them. And then the last one is how many losses will the Green Bay Packers have this year? I have no idea. Five, six. I dude, I have no clue. Maybe they go undefeated. Beats me, man. I don't play for them. So they, they determine their own victories, not me. Next up, John NYMC says, so you probably get asked this all the time. Now we all know there's going to be a Nintendo Direct soon. Well, we don't know for sure, technically. It's September. What three things do you want to see? So what three things do I want to see? Personally, just speaking from personal desires, Breath of the Wild 2. I don't think Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be there, but I want to see Breath of the Wild 2. I want to see a new Mario game, and I want to see a tease for Metroid Prime 4. Ku, and this one, the, this question now comes off of Twitter. How do you feel about cloud game support going forward? Do you think there will be more cloud games down the line that took the Kingdom Hearts direction because of the game package being too big so it couldn't fit onto a cartridge? Or do you think that's an excuse? That's an excuse. You, you, you said it at the end. Most of those Kingdom Hearts games can run natively on Switch, and most of those Kingdom Hearts games aren't very big file size-wise. We've seen them on other platforms. The file sizes aren't that big. The cartridges are fine. The cartridges could have fit all of those games onto a single cartridge. There are 32 gigabyte Switch cartridges, and there are factually games using them. It's an excuse. Also, what we forget is that you can do digital-only releases where you just download the games, and it doesn't really matter what the file sizes are. So, do I think cloud gaming is going to get more support on Switch in particular? Yeah, we've already seen an increase in that. I'm not someone who hates cloud gaming. I just dislike when it works poorly. Kingdom Hearts is an example of it working poorly. I would say Hitman 3 on Switch might be an example. The other way where that it actually works pretty well on Switch. Switch it up for uh, over on Twitter says, hey, Nintendo Prime, do you think Nintendo of America will release a new Fire Emblem game? Well, for starters, Nintendo of America doesn't make games, so they won't release anything. Uh, but will Nintendo release a new Fire Emblem game? Yeah, why wouldn't they? Saturn Ascends over on Twitter asked, whatever happened to this? And he's talking about the Mortal Kombat collection that was rated by multiple ratings boards back in 2020. Now it was rumored to be canceled in 2019, but then it popped up at rating boards in early 2020. And it made people go, man, I guess it's still coming. 
I don't know. I don't work for the studio. What am I supposed to tell you? Pandemic hit. It was already previously canceled and it supposedly brought back. Maybe those ratings were from the canceled version of the game. Like they already submitted it to the ratings board before canceling it. Uh, no real big reasons were given for the canceling in 2019. I just assume the development didn't go well. Uh, that, that's the only thing I can think of is, hey, development didn't go well, and then we hit a pandemic. I'm pretty sure that collection's not coming out. Uh, and if we ever do get a Mortal Kombat collection, it's going to be a brand new attempt at it years down the road. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's canceled. But again, I don't work for the studio, so I can't tell you 100%. And unfortunately, there hasn't been any real direct communication about it, even back in 2019 and 2020. Even 2019, when it was seemingly canceled, it wasn't like direct communication. So, yeah, uh, I, I think that's it. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for tuning in for Prime Answers. You guys have an awesome rest of your weekend. We'll have another video uh, for you guys tomorrow, I believe, on Sunday. It's either going to be a single piece of news or I actually have a couple other things I want to talk about, including making your Switch massive. Have you ever, like thought when you're on the go with your switch man you know what that switch screen is too small and i want it to be bigger i've got a solution for you and it's quite interesting